Hello again, I am Blunty, and today we're looking at something on the kooky side of photography. We're going to have some happy fun playtime with an unusual lens, but this time I promise not to mock hipsters as completely ludicrous as those tarred monkey wannabe poser know-nothings are. Moving on, so this is a lens I recently ordered from Photo Jojo. They call it a lo-fi micro four-thirds camera lens. But it's not that. They're not quite lying, but that's not really the truth either. In fact, this is not a lens made for the Micro Four Thirds system at all. In actuality, it's what's called a C-mount lens, which once upon a time was a lens mount common on 16mm movie cameras. These days, you usually find them on some security cameras, and this particular one was designed for CCTV video cameras. Photo Jojo solves it with an adapter, so you can use it on Micro Four Thirds system cameras. The metal adapter it comes with feels like it's good quality. It fits well, it locks into place with confidence, and feels nice and secure. The lens is a 25mm prime, which, when used on a Micro Four Thirds camera, gives you a 35mm equivalent focal length of 50 mils, And with a maximum aperture of f1.4, it's pretty damn fast, too. The build quality is... Well, it's rather less than inspiring. It doesn't really feel like a nasty, cheaply made toy or anything, but it's clearly never been in the same room with someone who knows how to spell premium either. My copy in particular has one of the aperture blades significantly out of alignment, and both the aperture ring and the manual focus ring have a very cheap feeling when turned. But all that said, being cheap, quirky, and a little bit unpredictable is actually kind of the point of using a lens like this. This lens isn't for shooting crisp and perfect magazine-style shots. This is a lens for playtime, for experimentation, for getting a unique, expressive look. It's sold with the intent of getting a so-called lo-fi effect, a phrase I loathe with a kind of deep sigh and eye-rolling indifference. But what they actually mean by that is you get often heavy vignetting around the edges of the frame, you'll get lots of lens flare, uh, you'll get somewhat muted colours and contrast and soft focus effects, but you'll also get quite a pleasant bokeh in the background blur, the ability to get near razor thin depth of field, and uh, an almost tilt shift kind of effect sometimes, making things look like they're miniatures. Trying to shoot video with it is... Well, it's a bit hit and miss, but if you're really careful and really deliberate, you can get some quite pleasant footage sucked through it. Yeah, I won't be using it to shoot vlogs, but if I ever have an urge to shoot some arty-farty student film type stuff, I might just whip it out, if you know what I mean. Truth is, I've had more fun and been more inspired by shooting with this lens than any other so-called lo-fi or toy lens I've had my hands on to date. I quickly grew to love the quirks of it and adore the aesthetic it produces. There are a couple of things to keep in mind if you're going to give a lens like this a try. There are no electronic connections to your camera, so you'll have to put your camera into manual mode and control everything the hard way. Although with the Olympus Pen EP3 I was using, I actually found that its auto mode did a pretty good job of nailing exposure, or at least get it close enough that I could get to where I wanted to be by shooting in RAW and shifting the exposure in post. You'll also have to manually focus the lens, of course, which can be tricky if you're shooting wide open with such a shallow depth of field, and this lens has a lot of travel in the focus ring, so fine control is actually reasonably easy. But I still highly recommend using an electronic viewfinder instead of the rear screen. It'll make your life easier. I also made full use of the zoom-in focus peaking that the EP3 offers. So then, if you've a mind to expand your options, have a bit of fun, and get creative beyond the standard lenses that are actually made for your camera, I'd say it's well worth a look. Let me know in the comments what you think of the quirky aesthetic. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.